بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين My brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We are speaking about the hereafter and we have reached the point of the major sign of the beast which will come out of the earth. We've already gone swiftly through them last class. Today, inshallah, we'll end the topic on the final pieces of the major signs that will happen before the world is destroyed. And today, inshallah, tonight, inshallah, we'll also, we will also explain, to the best of my knowledge, what the Quran and the Hadith say about how Allah will destroy the world. Not how, in, in other words, how he will do it. This is knowledge only known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But how the world will end, what will happen to the world. And we'll see, inshallah, we'll leave you there until the resurrection next week, inshallah. So we've already spoken about the Mahdi, the Jal, Ya'juj and Ma'juj otherwise known as Gog and Magog in the Bible, spoken about the rising of the sun from where it sets. We spoke about the swallowings of different earths, lands, in the west, east, and in the land or the island of the Arabs. We spoke about the smoke, how it says in the Quran that there is a type of smoke that will fill the world. Everyone will see it. We don't have too much detail about it, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the smoke will cover everyone. And people will think it's a terrible punishment. As for the beast, it is mentioned in the Quran, this beast. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that it's called Dabbatul Ard. The beast that walks the earth. A Dabba in Arabic means anything that walks the earth from an animal form. So it walks the earth and it's called a beast because a dabba, because it doesn't have a particular human form. Nor is it known to be of any an animal form that we know of. And Allah says, تُكَلِّمُ nas." In the Quran, it taught, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that تُكَلِّمُ nas." It will speak to the people with speech that you can understand this beast. There are many narrations in the ahadith about the nature of this beast, what it lo the features of this beast and what it looks like. And there are many weak hadiths, and fabricated ones about it. However, what I am comfortable to talk about is that it is a beast not like the human and not like any animal you've ever seen before. And there are some descriptions of, of different narrations, weak mixed with strong, I can tell you basically what kind of descriptions it's been given, but Allahu A'lam definitely what it looks like. Some of the descriptions narrated is that it is a huge animal. Some say it will come out of the earth, the authentic hadith is that it will come out of the earth in three days. But what they say is the first part of it, the first third of it will come out it will be huge, like a mountain. The second part and the third part. So it's larger than a mountain, some say. Some say that it has the features of different beasts. So it's not one particular form. Some say that its legs are like a camel. Its neck or its chest is like a lion. Its mouth is like a wolf. Its eyes like a cow. Striped like a tiger. Allahu A'lam, exactly what it looks like. But what we do know is that it's a beast and it will be carrying with it the stick of Sulaiman and it will wipe the people in two different colors. One is a dark color and one is a light color. And when we say dark, we don't mean the African look. And when we say light, we don't mean the white person's look like the Europeans. In Arabic, when you say Aswad and Abyad, Aswad, black and white, 
It has many meanings. Depends on the context. Here, we are talking about the brightness of the face and the darkness of the face. So you can be brown in color or yellow in color or tan in color, but you can, but you can describe this person as he's got nur coming out of his face, right? Light coming out of his face. It's not the color. It's what they appear. Now this beast makes this very apparent. In one hadith, which is authentic, it says that a person will be able, to, this is towards the end of the world, towards the end, a person will be able to tell who the disbeliever is from the believer, just by looking at them. And Allah tells us in the Quran, تُكَلِّمُ النَّاسِ أَنَّكُمْ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ It will speak to the people that you... Um, the meaning of the ayah, which I've forgotten the last words for it, but the, the, the meaning is that they, you say, they will say to them, you lied about the verses of your Lord. It talks to the disbelievers saying, you have lied, you have ne- de- denied them, you have disbelieved in them. Basically, it's telling him that today is this separation. And there is no more repentance at that time. This is also evidence, no more repentance at that time. And it comes after the Dajjal and the rising of the sun. Allah knows best. But this is the indication of the hadith and ayat. It's a clear distinction. It tells people who, what you are. Some narrations say that it is responsible to darken the face of the person who never prayed. Some narrations say that. But again, I couldn't follow them to an authentic source. Maybe part of it is true. But the point is it will come to separate the good from the evil and you'll be able to tell the difference between these people and it will speak to the people and Allah would have sent it like a messenger but not a prophet or a messenger that we're talking about it's like a different type of messenger this is another sign the world will know about this beast and it will go to everybody it will travel the whole earth and people will hear it at that point The signs of the last hour have almost ended. That's it. There's no more other signs that tell us about its coming, except the signs of destruction. The signs of destruction. The rumbling and the earthquakes. These are the signs that once they happen, that's it. The world is, is going to end and be destroyed worse. It's going to get worse and worse until it's finally completely destroyed and vanished. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Qur'an يَوْمَ تُبَدَّلُ الْأَرْضُ غَيْرَ الْأَرْضِ وَالسَّمَاوَاتِ On that day, the earth will be changed. It will be destroyed and another world will be, will take its place. تُبَدَّل To take something out and exchange it with something else. And so will the skies. Everything you see above you now will no longer be. Something else will be. It's not described, but there are in some hadith in the tafsir of Ibn Kathir. He explains some narrations of the Prophet Sallallahu telling us that you will find the earth like the, like the, the, the look of, of bread. The top of bread. And also that the earth will be flat. There will be no mountains, no hills, no shade, no trees. It's a whole different plane. Some narrations I heard about the sky being white. But again, Allahu A'lam exactly what that will be. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Qur'an, we have adorned everything on earth. In everything on earth, Allah has put it into plan and shape in order to test them. To test who? To test us, the human beings. And to distinguish those among them who were righteous from the ones who were not righteous. To test you, which of you do the best of deeds. Inevitably, we will wipe out everything on it. Leaving it completely barren. Chapter 18, verse 7. This verse 
is indicating to us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has only created what you see on earth in such a plan, such an order, that it is fit for the test, like an examination room. You put the tables, you put the examiners, uh, the, um, uh, the supervisors there, you give them pencils and give them probably a calculator if need be, or a piece of paper. The examination room is set. This earth is also like that. Allah is telling us we have ordained, we've made it in a way, in a system that will cater only for the test. This is why we don't need at the moment to see Allah, to see the unseen, like the angels in the hereafter right now. Don't worry about that night right now. This is part of the test. So everything is hidden away. Now if something is hidden away from you and you are only being tested, what's going to happen in the end, do you think? What happens? What's the law here? Allah has hidden all the unseen away from us. He told us that He has set this world in such a system that will fit your test. The test will end. What's going to happen after the test ends? All will be revealed. And the grounds of testing and the system which Allah has created, the laws which He has created to fulfill the environment for that test will also go. There's no longer any need for it. Therefore, it is understandable. When a person reads the Qur'an, as Allah says, the earth will therefore go. Since it's ordained for the test, it will go. It will no longer be here. There's no need for it to be anymore. Therefore, it will be destroyed. And the skies that you see. And the only thing will be left is everything else. What is revealed of the unseen? The real world. The real world. Before that happens, my dear brothers and sisters, it is not befitting for believers to be punished like the disbelievers. Therefore, if you follow the hadiths and the ayat in the Quran, you will find that step by step knowledge will diminish and fade away on earth. When we talk about knowledge, we're talking about beneficial knowledge which Allah has sent down. And since that knowledge will vanish, my dear brothers and sisters, everything that represents this knowledge and the sources of this knowledge will also be lost. It will be lifted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So finally the Qur'an itself will be lifted. This is also in the hadith. Then the Qur'an will be lifted. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Sahih al-Bukhari said, narrated by Abdullah ibn Umar, I heard the Messenger of Allah saying, Allah does not take away the knowledge, ilm, by taking it away from the hearts of the people. Allah doesn't take away the Qur'an and the knowledge from our hearts. No. Allah gives us the knowledge. And we are the ones who either want to keep it or let, or let it go. But Allah Himself does not take away your ilm away from you. He wants it to stay with you. But He takes it away by the death of the scholars. Or the religious learned men. Bimaut al-ulama. Till when none of the religious learned men remains, people will take as their leaders ignorant persons who when consulted will give their verdict without knowledge, without ilm. So they will go astray and they will lead others astray. They will go astray and they will cause other people to go astray. Some people look at us today, there are signs of this happening. There are signs of this happening. But we still, alhamdulillah, have ulama who lead to the proper way. What this hadith is indicating, according to many tafsirs of different scholars, that the end of the world, towards the end of the world, after Isa alayhi salam dies. After. And after Al-Mahdi comes, there will come a time where people will know nothing of this deen, and there is also an authentic hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Ibn Abbas tells this hadith on the Prophet's tongue after the Prophet's death. And he said, When their people will have no knowledge except one word, they will remember it. They learnt it from father, from grandfather. What is that word? La ilaha illallah. There is no God worthy of worship except Allah. And the companion to whom Ibn Abbas is speaking to, the Tabi, he said, What is this going to benefit them? What is this going to benefit them? Is that all they know? He said, 
تُنَجِّيهِم مِّنَ النَّارِ تُنجِيهِم مِّنَ النَّارِ تُنجِيهِم مِّنَ النَّارِ It will save them from the fire, it will save them from the fire. Ibn Abbas says this. There's no more other knowledge except that. And these final people will live, the majority of these people will be like that. We see today that a lot of our scholars and learned men in this religion are slowly dying. We had many recent scholars who died and passed away. The likes of none has yet to be heard of. Maybe they exist, but they're not known. Even worse than that, we see that when someone speaks the truth with absolute knowledge, they are silenced by enemies and authorities from within themselves or imprisoned. How many scholars in our days who speak the truth and don't fear anything except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have been imprisoned for speaking the truth. Put in prison for life over something superficial. And what's worse, by the people where they came from themselves, by their authority, by the Muslims themselves. How many do we hear today of people abusing the ulama? How many people speak about abusing the features of the ulama and the scholars and the learned and those students of knowledge? Many abuses. The Prophet ﷺ said also, Medina will remain inhabited during the days of the Dajjal. I will show you again how knowledge and religion is slowly going to fade. This is what we're talking about. I'm taking you through a sequence here. Towards the end of the world, how Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, what, what Allah, how Allah will prepare the world for destruction. He said, Medina will remain inhabited during the days of the Dajjal. And during the time of Isa alayhi salam, son of Mary, Ibn Maryam, until he dies and is buried there. Yani Isa alayhi salam will be buried in Medina. Then it will be destroyed. Medina will be destroyed. Kharab al Medina. You'll find this hadith in Muslim and also in Ahmad. Sunan Ahmad is authentic hadiths. And the destruction of Medina, as our ulama say, it is not because the people will actually break it. It's not physical destruction. But the destruction, Kharab al Medina, means the knowledge and the religion in there. There will be no longer people representing it in there. They'll either die or would have left. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu said, I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa say, A rider will go around Medina and say, There used to be many Muslims here. This is in Sunan Ahmad. A rider is like a traveler. Someone will just come by and will pass this deserted land. And he'll say, or maybe not deserted, could be deserted or deserted of Muslims. And he will say, I think Muslims used to live here. It will become history. You see? Like when we say, pass by a land that's been occupied by someone else, and you say, such and such people used to occupy this land. At the end of time, towards that era, the Prophet ﷺ tells us about a very strange man who will rule the earth and guess where he will be from? He will be from Abyssinia, Ethiopia. An Abyssinian king will rule the earth. His name, as the Prophet ﷺ describes him, is It's a name and a description. Dhusawaiqatain means the man of the peculiar looking shins. They're thin and they're short. He will come from Abyssinia, Al Habasha, Ethiopia. And he will destroy the Kaaba. Not the Medina, the Kaaba itself, the holiest symbol of the Muslims today. He will destroy the Kaaba in order to steal its treasure and clothe covering. What is the clothe covering? Kiswa? 
What I understand from that is the covering they have on it today. Or the cloth covering. Al-Kiswa. The Kaaba is the ancient building which was built by Ibrahim alayhi salam and whose foundations were laid by Adam. This is the hadith of the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran حَتَّى إِذَا فُتِحَتْ يَأْجُوجُ وَمَأْجُوجُ until the day that Gog and Magog people are let through their barrier. The tafsir is that it is reported from Ka'b al-Ahbar that the Suwaiqatayn will first emerge at the end of Isa alayhi salam's time. Allah will send Isa alayhi salam at the head of a vanguard of between seven and eight hundred. While they are marching towards the Suwaiqatayn, and there's a special army of about 500, 800 special, which Isa alayhi salam will take with him to fight the Suwaiqatayn. Allah will send a breeze from the direction of Yemen, which will take the soul of every believer. Only the worst of people will be left, and they will begin to live like animals or copulate like animals. Ka'ab al who said, at that time, the hour will be close at hand. In other hadiths, it tells us that the Suwaiqatayn will appear before this knowledge completely goes, and he will live to that time. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu said, I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, the Suwaiqatayn from Abyssinia will destroy the Kaaba and steal its treasures and kiswa, the cloth covering. It is as if I could see him now. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying, It is as if I could see him now. And then he describes him. He says, He is bold headed and has a distortion in his wrists. They are a little bit deformed. He will strike the Kaaba with his spade and pickaxe. This is narrated by Sunan Ahmad as well. It was reported from Abdullah ibn Umar, the Allah the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also said, Leave the Abyssinians alone, so long as they do not disturb you. For no one will recover the treasure of the Kaaba except the Suwaiqatayn from Abyssinia. Abyssinia, the Ethiopians, are our brothers if they are Muslims. And if they are not, leave them alone. There's nothing wrong. When Prophet ﷺ spoke about the Suwaiqatayn, it's as if the companions got angry. And he said to them, leave the Abyssinians alone. The man's name is the Suwaiqatayn. He happens to be coincidentally from Abyssinia. It doesn't mean you fight the people of this man who existed before him, or even in his time. Ibn Abbas narrated that the Prophet ﷺ said, It is as if I can see him now. He is black, and his legs are widely spaced. He will destroy the Kaaba stone by stone. I just want to make a little comment here. In some countries, when you say the word black about Africans or Ethiopians, uh, it's an insult. We don't worry about these terminologies that people are using and the stereotypical uh, theories and ideas which they've made up. The word black has always been since the creation of Adam alayhi salam. When we say that, we mean it in a respectful way that this is the color that people are used to saying, white and black and yellow. So there is no... Bilal radiallahu anhu was a great leader. Abu Huray radiallahu anhu narrates many hadiths and they were all uh, African. The Prophet ﷺ said, The hour will not come until a man from Qahtan. Qahtan is the Suwaiqatan. His tribe is called Qahtan, or his family lineage, appears and rules the people. This is in Muslim and similar hadiths in Bukhari. This man could be the, the Suwaiqatan, someone else, Allahu Alam, but he comes from Qahtan. And some others say the Suwaiqatan comes from Abyssinia. Allahu A'lam about this. And another hadith, Rasul said, Day and night will not come to an end until a man called Jah Jah or Ja Ja holds sway. He will come and he will rule and he will destroy. And Allahu A'lam, this could also be the name of the Suwaiqatayn. Umar radiallahu anhu reported that he heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, the people of Mecca will leave. The people of Mecca will leave. And only a few people will pass through it. 
then it will be resettled and rebuilt, then the people will leave it again and no one will ever return. These are also signs that pious people, religious people, as though that he is telling us they will no longer be on earth in that time. How? How can religious people be on earth and not be in Mecca? Since the day the Prophet ﷺ conquered Mecca, Muslims have never ever left the Kaaba. There's always been someone in there, night and day, from that day. Not a single day, except probably in a flood, a terrible flood or something. <coughs> There's always been people in the Haram. Now that we know this, this Sawaiqatain will come and grab the Kaaba, break it brick by brick, and no one will be able to stop him. Well, not that no one will be able, you think. No one will stop him because there will be no one to stop him. Either he'll be so powerful, but Allahu A'lam about that, but what the hadiths indicate is that there will be no believers on that time. When that happens, my dear brothers and sisters, and the Kaaba is destroyed, therefore, no believers. Muwahid. You heard the hadith earlier that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send the breeze before the Muslims reach the Suwaiqatain and every believer. In another hadith, Prophet said, every believer, Muwahid, who is a monotheist, believes in only one God and doesn't make any shirk, will die. Will die peacefully from this breeze. And only the disbelievers and the tyrants and the criminals will stay on earth. The Kaaba is destroyed. The symbols of Islam are destroyed. The Quran has been lifted. There is no more Islamic knowledge. What's left? A dunya. Dunya. The world. The word dunya in Arabic comes from dana'a or daniya or dunuwa, which means something which is low. Metaphorically speaking, low, as in its value is low. Daniya. Don't go after this dunya, it's daniya, it's low. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ad dunya mal'una. The dunya is cursed. Mal'unun ma fiha. Everything in it is cursed. Illa dhikrullahi wa ma wala. Except for the remembrance of Allah and whoever are the allies of the remembrance of Allah. So the beasts and creatures are allies of the remembrance of Allah. Because Allah says in the Quran, Wa in min shay'in illa yusabbihu bihamdihi wa lakin la tafqahuna tasbihahum. There isn't anything on earth other than the humans and jinns except that it glorifies in the name of Allah but you cannot understand their praise. And in other verses in the Quran, Allah talks about mountains and trees and all that that glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The point is, Allahu A'lam, what will happen to the animals? Will they die before the end of time? Allah knows best. But the point is, everything on earth is cursed that does not follow the allegiance of the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what happens to this mal'una? It gets destroyed. And everything that's mal'una on it will also get destroyed. Now it's ready. No more repentance, everything's destroyed, symbols of Islam. Finally, the last piece of sign will happen. And the final sign before the la before the day before the day of, of, of destruction is the fire. An nar. Rasul Sallallahu tells us, you find this hadith in Sahih Muslim, you find it in Bukhari, you find it in almost all the books of hadith, six books, major books of hadith. A fire will come out. From where exactly we don't know, but it comes from towards uh, the uh, the northern part of the of the world, and it will spread through the world. Now, in Arabic, when you say "nar," there are many forms of fire. It, it's fire, but "nar" is applied to any form of of of, of something that's hot. It's "nar." It can be lava, it could be meteors, it could be actual fire, Allahu A'lam. It could be acid, it could be something from the earth, volcanic eruptions, only Allah knows exactly. But the point is it burns. And the people of the world will run away from that fire because it will take over their homes and lands. It's no longer livable. You can't live there anymore. Is it a meteorite that will hit the earth? Allahu A'lam. 
Only Allah knows exactly. The point is it's now. And it will gather the people, Rasul said, it will gather the people to their gathering. Mahsharihim. Some scholars say this means that it will gather them to the place where they will be resurrected on a day of judgment. That's the place on earth. Some other scholars say, no, it will gather them together in a place, in one place, and that's where the world will end and they'll all die there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. But the point is this fire will gather everyone. As it is moving, it moves slowly and people are moving. Then the first moments of the destruction of the world begins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ فَصَعِقَ مَن فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ إِلَّا مَن شَاءَ اللَّهُ. The trumpet will be blown, and everything in the heavens and earth will die, except whom Allah wills not to die. وَحُمِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ وَالْجِبَالُ فَدُكَّتَا دَكَّةً وَاحِدَةً فَيَوْمَئِذٍ وَقَعَتِ الْوَاقِعَةِ In Surah Al-Haqqa, when the trumpet is blown, the, the mountains, look at the description, the mountains and the earth, soil and, and other things that are on earth, rocks, mountains, will be carried off. حُمِلَتْ be carried upwards. And if you are living and can see it, see mountains losing gravity with earth, they're going upwards. فَدُكَّتَا دَكَّةً وَاحِدًا They'll be crushed like all at once. As though a hand lifts them up like that and then crushes it all at once, like one palm. دَكَّةً when you, when you say duck, it's like crushing something tightly and, and, and hardly into the ground. That is the day when the inevitable event will come to pass. What is the inevitable event? The day of judgment. Allah calls it وَقَعَتِ الْوَاقِعَةِ الْوَاقِعَةِ means a thing that will definitely happen. Eh, the whole world and all of us are working towards it. That's the end. Everyone is working towards that reality. It is the day of judgment which will decide who will go where for eternity. And there's only two places, eternal happiness or eternal misery. Except in between, there will be some Muslims who will be punished a little. We'll talk about that in later classes to come, inshaAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, إِذَا الشَّمْسُ كُوِّرَتْ When the sun will lose its light, or when the sun will roll into a, into a strange type of ball. It's already a ball now, but what Allah is telling us, it will lose its light and its power. It will eat itself away. إِذَا الشَّمْسُ كُوِّرَتْ وَإِذَا النُّجُومُ كَدَرَتْ And when the stars will lose their position or will collide with one another. وَإِذَا الْجِبَالُ سُيِّرَتْ when the mountains will be made flat and equal in level. So the mountains are now different levels, right? So Allah says, suyirat means they're made leveled. Leveled meaning with the ground. And when Beasts or camels, uh, camels that are pregnant, will drop their babies. In another verse in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhan nasu attaqu rabbakum. O people, O people, guard yourselves from the anger of Allah or the punishment of Allah. Ya ayyuhan nasu attaqu rabbakum. Inna zalzalata sa'ati shay'un azim. The, the rumbling of the last hour is something great, enormous, huge, unbelievable. If Allah says it's azim, something unbelievable.
إِنَّ زَلْزَلَةَ السَّاعَةِ شَيْءٌ عَظِيمٌ Why? Allah says, يَوْمَ تَرَوْنَهَا تَذْهَلُ كُلُّ مُرْضِعَةٍ عَمَّا أَرْضَعَتْ وَتَضَعُ كُلُّ ذَاتِ حَمْلٍ حَمْلَهَا وَتَرَى النَّاسَ سُكَارًا وَمَا هُمْ بِسُكَارًا وَلَكِنَّ عَذَابَ اللَّهِ شَدِيدٌ which means on that day you will see every woman that is pregnant her baby will be dropped she can't hold it out of fear every single woman that's pregnant and you will find the people running around as if they are intoxicated drunk like a drunk person but they are not drunk but the punishment of your Lord is so scary and so hard So Allah keeps on saying, وَإِذَا الْمُحُوشُ وَإِذَا الْبِحَارُ سُجِّرَتْ The ocean also will lose its balance. Imagine. And we all witnessed on television examples of the tsunami. That's only little examples happening now. Allah tells us when the oceans really lose their balance. Big tsunamis. And the... Imagine... It's un- undescribable. When you hear these things, mountains and earth lifted and crushed, the sun losing its light and power, and the stars colliding with one another, uh, the oceans losing their balance and their laws of balance and all that stuff, this only tells you that there is a terrible imbalance happening in the universe, in the solar system, gravity, everything, as though everything is reversed. As though gravity is being lost and everything is being reversed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells us that when He destroys the earth, Allah tells us that every man will remember and what remembers do for him. In Surah Al Qiyamah. Allah swears by the Qiyamah, by the day of resurrection and by the day of destruction. When Allah swears by something, it's something amazing. Allah says, La uqsimu bi yawm al Qiyamah, wa la uqsimu bin nafs al I swear by the day of resurrection and I swear by the soul that repents. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us that when you hear about the hereafter and the destruction, come back to your Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala values you a lot. Come back to your Lord. Nafsil lawama. And then Allah talks about how He will raise you and how He will gather you. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِذَا بَرِقَ الْبَصَرُ وَخَسَفَ الْقَمَرُ وَجُمِعَ الشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ يَقُولُ الْإِنسَانُ يَوْمَئِذٍ أَيْنَ الْمَفَرُ Behold, when the eyesight is taken to shock like lightning, meaning everything is taken away before your eyes like lightning, and the sun and the moon are joined or eclipsed, Allahu Alam, is this on earth or is this on the day of judgment? I'm not sure. But man will say, where are we going to run away to? There's no running away. Where are you going to run away? I read uh, a Muslim scientist who knows a lot about the laws of physics and metaphysics. He had this theory. Allahu alam if this is true or not, but interested me a lot. He said, when Allah, as Allah describes how the the world will end and how the gravity will be lost and the stars and the solar system and the universe and he started talking about black holes and what are they and what happens there and where do they lead to and, you know, all these things. He started saying things like... um, uh, when man says, where are we going to run away to? They can't. There's no escape. Um, it's not that something's holding him there. It's just that wherever they go, it returns them back to where they started. They can't go anywhere. As though the, the skies will be opened. And this is in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the skies will be opened and things will be revealed and the angels will descend. What is this? What's happening to the universe? Where are we? What's happening? 
It's as if something's camouflaged, covering you, and then suddenly it's just released. And whatever was behind it is revealed. And Allah talks about something like that in the Quran in Surah Qaf. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. That power says, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْفِهُ بِسْئِهِ نَفْسُهُ وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says afterwards in a few verses down, لَقَدْ كُنْتَ فِي غَفْلَةٍ مِّنْ هَذَا فَكَشَفْنَا عَنْكَ غِطَاءَكَ فَبَصَرُكَ الْيَوْمَ حَدِيدَ You were before this, you had a veil in front of your eyes, you couldn't see the unseen. Today, we unravel, we, were, we, we take this veil away, and now your eyesight is sharp, you can see everything. Alaykum as wa rahmatullah. So Allahu A'lam. But there is a changing, and you will see the unseen, but what benefit will that be? That's why they say, Ain al mafar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran as well, that, these peop- that the people will say, Yawma yatadhakkar al-insan, man will remember. They'll remember the purpose why they were here. They'll remember that they had to worship Allah. They'll remember that they had to prepare for this day. وَأَنَّ لَهُ الذِّكْرَ Allah says, what remembrance is going to benefit them that day? It's over. The whole humans and the animals will die from the trumpet. Everything that hears the trumpet will die. The jinns will die. Iblis will be the last to die. But he will die, he will die by the destruction of the earth, of the, of the world. He will not stay until the day of resurrection. Because Iblis tried to trick, well not tried to trick, but he tried to, well he did, he tried to, 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 to use, to, he, he tried to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow him to stay till the day we are resurrected. Oh my Lord, let me stay till the day they are resurrected, day of judgment. Allah said, You will be left alive until the known day. Some people say, well, how did Allah accept the dua of Iblis when he is Iblis? He did not accept his dua. He rejected his dua. Iblis wanted to live to the day of resurrection. Allah said, you will live to the last hour only. You are going to be destroyed with all, every other evil. That's when your time is. Because you are the root of evil. I'm going to destroy you. In one narration it says that the angel of death comes to take Iblis' soul out and Iblis runs to all the corners of the earth and he finds the angel of death there. And he dies. He's taken away. Iblis doesn't want to die. You see? He doesn't want to die. He thinks he's still got hope. And that feeling, he puts it, or he, this is what he whispers into the minds of the human beings. Don't worry. You're going to live more. You've got long days to go. Don't worry. You're still young now. Person 70 years old says, You're still going to live. Don't worry. He's 80. He's still going to live. He's on his deathbed at the hospital. Don't worry. They say you're going to die, but there's still some hope. You're probably still going to live. Enjoy life. Have a little bit more of enjoyment. Don't worry about worship right now. Yes, the shaitan does that because that's his characteristic. And when the angel of death comes to take his soul, he runs away. He thinks he's not going to die. He thinks he can escape. Subhanallah. So when everything on earth dies, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroys the universe. And then he says to the angel of death, well, before I say this, I remember last class we mentioned about some scientific discoveries and theories based on discoveries they found now in, in, in space. Scientists say that the world, the universe will either reach a point where it will be stabilized, where everything will freeze, or they said that uh, the universe will crunch, come back on itself like an elastic recoil, like elasticity. And it recoils. Some say it will keep stretching until it all gets destroyed and then a new universe will be created by another big bang. That's the, their idea when they don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the Quran tells us there'll be a destruction, there'll be a collision, there'll be a recreation of something else, but not by chance, but by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it's amazing how they say these things when they don't believe in the Quran. They're so close yet so far. Subhanallah. 
Allah then tells the angel of death, orders him to take Jibreel alayhi salam's soul out. This narration, I am not sure of its authenticity, but I did hear it from several shaykhs in my time, including the late Shaykh Kishk, rahmatullahi alayhi. He's a renowned scholar in Egypt. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. The point is, they said that the hadiths are that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command the angel of death to take the soul of Jibreel alayhi salam out. The, the heavens and shake and they say, Jibreel yamut, Jibreel dies. They are silenced and the angel of death takes his soul out. Then Mikael, then Israfil, then the angel of death takes his own soul out. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins to address call out to the criminals of the world such as Pharaoh and Namrud and, the, and uh, the, the, the tyrants of the world where are you? where are you O disbelievers? where are you O so and so? where are you O criminals? O you who challenged me where are you today? O you who thought you will overpower me? and then Allah says man baqi? man baqi? who is left? who is left? لم يبقى إلا أنا لم يبقى إلا أنا I am the only one left there's nothing else but me أنا الله أنا القهار أنا الوهاب I am the overpowering I am Allah I am the everlasting I am the all powerful أنا القوي المجيد أنا ملك الملك I am the king of all kings I am I am سبحانه وتعالى praises himself with his attributes with his glorious attributes and names Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one worthy of this praise. For He is the most glorious, most merciful in every way beyond our imagination. At that point, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa tells us that people stay dead for only Allah knows how long. Some hadiths say 40. The companions who narrate these hadiths say, we don't know, did He mean 40 days, 40 years, 40 months? Allahu alam. But they stay dead for 40. وَيَغْضِبُ رَبِّي غَضَبًا لَمْ يَغْضَبْ مِثْلَهُ قط. Rasul Sallallahu tells us that our Lord will be angry in such a state of anger which He has never been before. Allah. There is an attribute of His which is anger. But when we describe something, it's not from our minds. We describe it as Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala described Himself. Or as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, but we always add to it the following ayah. لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ There is nothing like him or can be compared to him. And he sees and hears all things. We don't know. He sees is unlimited in his seeing, but it's not like ours. He hears unlimited in his hearing, but it's not like ours. Allah is angry, but it's not like our anger. In a manner that befits his majesty, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do not deny these words, for he said them, and the Prophet ﷺ said them. However, we cannot describe them, except the way Allah and His Messenger described them. The point is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in a state of anger, in a manner that befits Him. And why wouldn't He? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us every opportunity to earn great rewards. He was generous with the hasanat. He was generous in coming to us. says, Abdi in taqarrabta ilayya shibran. If you come closer to me, a palm. I will come close to you, to you ten. If you come walking to me, I'll come, I'll come hastening to you. So on, so on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, many ways. If you, do, if you do one good deed, Allah will multiply it to ten folds. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala multiplies for whoever He wills. There are some of you who get more than ten. The sayya, the sin is only one. You do a sin, it's only one. You do a hasana, it's multiplied by ten automatically. And he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us all these opportunities. He gave us the ability, the faculties of our body to do this. He guided us, sent messengers to us, granted us His mercy, His forgiveness. Abdi, لو أتيتني بقراب الأرض خطايا ثم أتيتني لا تشرك بي شيئا أتيتك بقرابها مغفرة. Oh my servant, if you come to me on a day of judgment, 
and you have sins as much as the earth, but you don't make partners with me, then I will forgive them for you. Allah is forgiving. وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ تَوْبَةً نَصْوَىٰ Repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincere repentance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive your sins. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهِ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ وَمَنْ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَلَمْ يُصِرُّوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ يعني الله سبحانه وتعالى and those who remember who do a bad deed or a very indecent act, and they remember Allah, and they say, only Allah can forgive me. And who else forgives but Allah, so long as they don't insist on continuing to do it deliberately and uh, stubbornly. Who is? Allah is telling us, so forgiving. My mercy has overcome my anger. All of these opportunities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Times in the day which Allah accepts repentance, times in the day which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts dua. If you pray five prayers, count it as fifty. You're moving an obstacle off the road. It's like a sadaqah. Subhanallah, how many opportunities? Whereas the sayyah, a sin, is equal to one sin. You do major sins, Allah forgives them if you repent to Him. If you think of a sin, then you change your mind. Not to do it, it's a hasana. If you do it, it's just one sayyah. If you change your mind and do a hasana, instead it's multiplied by 70. What do you want more than that? So Allah is angry on that day. You know, when a father, وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلِ الْأَعْلَى To Allah belongs the best of examples. We're not comparing Allah to humans. أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ However, just to bring something, bring a metaphor to your mind. A father out of his love for his son or daughter, when his son or daughter go wrong, they get angry. But this anger is not an anger of tyranny or oppression. It's an anger of love. It comes from love. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is compassionate and merciful with His servants. So Why? Why do we worship someone other than him? He says, Oh my servant, I feed you, but you thank someone else. I clothe you, you thank someone else. You live on my earth and in my kingdom, and you worship someone else. Subhanallah. So Allah is angry. يَغْضِبُ غَضَمًا لَمْ يَغْضَبْ مِثْلَهُ قَطْ As the Prophet ﷺ states, And then the day of true resurrection comes. And I will end it today with the ayah of the Qur'an that speaks about the beginning of resurrection. Allah recreates Israfil alayhi salam who is the blower in the trumpet. Allah says in the Qur'an, وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ فَصَعِقَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ إِلَّا مَنْ شَاءَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ نُفِخَ فِيهِ أُخْرَى فَإِذَا هُمْ قِيَامٌ يَنْظُرُونَ The first time the trumpet will be blown and everything in the heavens and earth will be destroyed except who Allah wills not to and then it will be blown into a second time and behold they are all up قيام Standing, yanzurun, looking and watching, looking and watching. It means everybody knows what's going to happen. Well, they don't know what's going to happen to them, but they know what that day is. Shaykhisatun absaruhum. Their eyes are looking up like that, with terror. Shaykhisat, like this. Jazakum Allah khair. Hada wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbi ajma'in. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.